So one thing that might be helpful just to understand the logs a little bit better uh, is to look at a, a more complicated problem. In this example, we end up having a very large number of uh, binary variables. So you can see this involves uh, 56, almost 5,700 uh, uh, constraints. There are almost 2,000 variables. Within there, there's a large number of um, non-zero values. Uh, and then if we look at the, uh, the, the problem, we can see that, yes, there are a very large number of integer binary variables, only a small number of continuous variables. So this is actually a pretty difficult problem to solve if you think about the, the four variable uh, branch and bound example that we went through before and the number of iterations that were required there. Uh, you know, you, you can extend that, that same idea to this problem and see that this is actually going to be a, a pretty difficult problem to solve. The solver will go through. Uh, it'll make note of any changes that you applied as a user. Here we said that it could use up to four uh, concurrent solutions, right? So we're doing multi-threading. Um, we're enforcing cuts. We'll talk a little bit more about cuts later, uh, which would attempt to s simplify the problem before it's solved and then uh, develop information. So this is what a solver log might look like if you're running a more uh, complex problem. So here we have uh, a listing of the nodes, the number of nodes that have been explored and unexplored. Um, so as we go through each iteration, we're gonna start figuring out how many nodes there are to explore and then uh, check off those that are ultimately explored. Um, information about the current node in this problem that's, that's not used. Um, the objective bounds, right? This, so this is really your, your primary indication that the problem is, is making progress. So here in this column, we have our incumbent solution. The incumbent solution, again, is the, the integer solution uh, that is the best one identified so far. Uh, the best bound is the relaxed solution, that is the best remaining uh, the, the best remaining node or the best unexplored node that remains. So this problem we're trying to minimize. Uh, so we want our incumbent to get down closer to the best bound. So we start off and we have a really high gap. Uh, and you'll note that over here we've got the time. This is the, the wall time, uh, clock time, at which these things are, are identified. So we start off with a very large gap. The solver very quickly within you know, less than a second is able to reduce the gap from 73 uh, down to, what, about 30%. And it's doing that both by identifying a better incumbent and also by you know, removing nodes from, uh, or fathoming nodes and branches from, from the tree. So this continues on and this, this uh, process. As we go along, we now start uh, checking off nodes that are at the bottom of the tree and saying that that They've all sort of been explored, and you can keep track of that. Uh, but you'll notice that you know, pretty quickly we stop improving. Um, so after five seconds, we have a gap of 25.9, which is a, a really significant improvement over the start, but uh, it really starts to level off. And then uh, over some amount of time, in this case, uh, this solver log went for 300 seconds, uh, we see a further, some further improvement. Uh, but, but not a huge amount. In the end, we're given information on the cuts that were made. Again, we'll talk about cuts in a, in a future video. Uh, and then the, the ultimate solution that was found. So here, I gave this, this solver 300 seconds to identify a solution. It found a solution, it found a number of solutions, but it didn't close the gap, right? It didn't get uh, get anywhere close to deciding that uh, the, the best incumbent solution and the remaining relaxed solution are within some tolerance. So this uh, solution was actually fine, right? The, the solution that was identified was fine um, for the application that I needed it for. And, and this is uh, ultimately uh, the solution that was used but you could let it continue to run. You, know, you could let it run for an hour. And in fact, if we, if we do that, we can see how much more progress could be made. So let's look at this same solver log. If we plotted out the, the upper and lower bound as a function of time, 
we let it run for an hour, you can see after that, uh, say initial 10 seconds to uh, 100 seconds, the progress really is not that significant for this problem. You can still improve the lower bound. That is, we're, we're fathoming branches and throwing away parts of the solution, but the solution that we identified, the incumbent solution, is actually not getting any better. Uh, so the objective is not further improving after about, you know, um, after about uh, 10 seconds or so, 10 to 100 seconds. It's really not improving anymore. So as far as we're concerned, you might as well cut off the solution at about 10 seconds rather than uh, letting it run for uh, an hour in this case. Another way of looking at this is uh, to see the same data plotted in terms of the update number. So first we update every time there's improvement, and then after improvements stop, we update every five seconds. And again, you can see there's a, a really rapid improvement per iteration uh, early on, uh, and then it, it stagnates. So in this type of situation, you might find that uh, you really need the gap to be uh, smaller than 17% or whatever the case may be, and so you let it run for a day or a couple days uh, for this, like I said, for this scheduling application, we just needed to find a, a good enough schedule that worked, you know, a feasible solution or a feasible solution that's a little bit better than the alternatives was really all that, that we needed. So this is how you can use some of the uh, results that come back from the log to, first of all, understand the quality of your solution, but also to understand when the solution that you have might be good enough and to just let this, the solver terminate so in the next video, what we're going to do is talk through uh, how you might go about improving your complex models to solve more quickly and to better constrain the bounds of the problem so that you're not requiring a very broad search in your, in your algorithms.